I have tried to replace my laptop with an iPad and I would like to share my experience with you. Is it really possible to get everything done using an iPad? Well, technically you can if you have the iPad Pro, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows as you might think. The modern day iPad even has the same processor as the MacBooks. There are both M1 and M2 variants making it the same as most MacBooks. And yeah, right, the M2 processor is actually quite powerful as you may already know. But the area where the iPad lacks is in terms of the apps that are there for the iPad. Before we start criticizing it, let's go through the pros of using an iPad Bro. My name is Prithviraj and let's get started. The primary things I would do on my laptop is managing my schedule, scripting and editing my videos. Don't forget creating thumbnails on Photoshop. One aspect that's a part of my daily life but I doubt how much I can actually execute and that is music production. In case you are a programmer, I guess there are various apps that you can try out as well. I don't think VS Code is actually available for the iPad though. Alright, so the biggest advantage of using an iPad as your primary computer is its form factor. Well, if you get the official magic keyboard for the iPad, it will still take a lot less space compared to a laptop. But just take a look at this price. It's more portable but for now I'm better off using a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. If you wanted a minimal form factor then yeah you can actually get the magic keyboard for the iPad. It also comes with a trackpad built in. Another aspect that I really enjoy about the iPad is when it comes to the entertainment side. If you have been using a Windows laptop then it's highly possible that the speakers of your laptop simply sucks. But in case for an iPad it's the reverse. You are gonna have a great experience binge watching your favorite shows on Netflix and Prime Video with great audio as well as video quality. Absolutely no compromises out there and the iPad has a far better battery life compared to any laptops out there. That's another thing you should be keeping in mind. It of course handles all the lightweight tasks quite brilliantly. For example, you can use Google Docs, Sheets or MS Excel for that matter on your iPad without facing any issues. It will run smoothly. I used to script my videos on Google Docs. I've switched to a different app for that now. It's an app called Simple Note. The reason why I switched was due to the fact that this app is available on all platforms. We don't have a native app for Google Docs on Windows. Hence, I use Simple Note for scripting my videos and also I store and organize my data on Google Drive so that's pretty much taken care of. Managing my task on Notion and Todoist are basically the same experience everywhere. Rather researching for my videos was actually quite easy on the iPad. The multitask window allowed me to script my videos quite nicely comparing the source side by side but the limitation is that you can only have two apps open at the same time. It has this feature called stage manager but it's quite weird to be honest. One more thing I forgot to mention is that if you're a student this can actually turn out in your favor. Because most of the best handwritten note taking apps are there for the iPad, be it good notes or maybe notability. But the social media apps are not really optimized for iPad. Take a look at Instagram and threads. It's so damn ugly. I have no idea why Meta hasn't fixed this yet. But if you have a MacBook, you can't really game on it. But if you're using an iPad, then that has been taken care of. This morning, I actually saw Netflix offering the definitive edition of GTA San Andreas, Vice City and others. That too for free if you're a Netflix subscriber. You can game nicely on such a big screen. The typing experience is really, really bad. Unless you hook it up with an external keyboard, of course. But now the things get interesting. Let's start by talking about photo editing. If you have the Apple Pencil, then it can be so therapeutic. Lightroom for the iPad is actually so great. I wish Lumina Neo was there for the iPad as well. I would have loved of that as well but for now I had a great experience like editing my photos on Lightroom. Using the Apple Pencil you can like be more precise that way. Photoshop is also natively available for the iPad so my thumbnails were taken care of quite nicely. I'll be talking about them a little later. Let's talk about video editing now. Had to connect multiple dongles and stuff to transfer my videos. Not surprised here as you have to do the same thing on a MacBook as well. We have various options to choose from when it comes to video editors. If you are deep inside the Adobe Creative Cloud suit then you can check out Premiere Rush. You also have Final Cut Pro for the iPad now. Just like Photoshop, many things are missing in this one. I'll be addressing them again later. DaVinci Resolve is the only app that exactly looks same as the desktop version. Not from the start though. You'll have to manually unlock all the workspaces. I've previously created a video on how you can do that and also covering the basics for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested. But yeah, I use DaVinci Resolve as my primary video editor. Hence, I felt at home while editing my videos here on DaVinci. Not the best experience, I must say. It lags so much and stutters are everywhere. I think you might not have that much issues if you're working with 1080p Full HD videos. But if you're working on 4K videos like myself, then you're gonna have a tough time. The CPU performance might be good on the iPad, but the graphics performance just isn't there. It's not at all optimized for that. And yeah, rendering my video took like forever to finish. If you are a digital artist, however, then the iPad can pretty much be the best device you might own. Procreate is one of the best apps for creating digital art. You are absolutely gonna love that. Procreate have also released an app for creating animations called Procreate dreams. This looks very promising. I'd like to cover that in a future video of mine. And also is it a good time for me to ask you to hit the subscribe button? 
But the biggest issue that I faced was while making music. If you're a Logic user, you won't be facing any issues. But my primary door of choice is actually FL Studio. We only have a mobile version of FL Studio for the iPad and that was sad. And in this version of FL Studio Mobile, I wouldn't really want to make music in this app. It's only good for programming drums and creating melodies perhaps. If I dedicated my time to learn Logic Pro, then this issue might not have arise. If I was natively a Logic Pro user, then this issue might have not been there itself. But since I'm not, it didn't really work out. So Surprisingly, there are so many good samplers out there. If you wanted to use it as a sampler for your DJ performance, then you absolutely can. Even Recordbox is now available on the iPad. For those who have no idea, Recordbox is the industry standard DJ software. It's an official app by Piney DJ on top of that. But the thing is that you don't have a headphone jack. I don't know why they do this every time. If Apple really wants us to professionally work on audio on the iPad, then they should actually consider bringing back the headphone jack. Unlike on the iPhone, we have a lot of space for headphone jack on the iPad. I think this deserves to make a comeback. Overall, as you can see, that the iPad was actually able to cater all my needs. But the thing is that most of the apps are actually a trimmed down version of their laptop counterparts. Take a look at Photoshop, for example. It has much more controls and feature in the desktop version. So many things are just not there for the iPad. Bad. It's all missing. In short, it's not the fully fledged version of Photoshop as many of you know. Same story for Final Cut and Logic Pro. Many plugins and stuff are missing. That is the reason I called it a trimmed down version of their original counterparts. Based on my consumption habits, I don't think I can use the iPad as my primary device in long term. That's mostly because I'm so much dependent on such heavyweight apps that the iPad is just not capable for that as of now. But in case you just need the basics right, they can actually do that quite nicely. In the larger spectrum where the iPad lies is basically in the midway. You have your smartphones on one side and laptops on the other. The iPad sits exactly in the middle. It's more than a smartphone but less than a laptop. And it's most likely gonna be like that for a very long time. But to be honest, this is a beast of a device when it comes to the entertainment side of things. Like I previously said, you can just binge watch your favorite shows all day. And especially when you're traveling in long flights, this is an ideal companion. There is also a survey that shows that the iPad is the second most used tech gadget in an airplane. First one being the iPhone, of course. Just like me, you can take up this challenge and try using your iPad as your primary device just for a day and see how you feel regarding that. If you are confused, then I must say depending on your priorities, you can choose the right device. The modern day MacBook Air can be a good choice actually if you need a little more juice. If you are a digital artist, then hands down the iPad is the best device you can get for yourself. For entertainment and other generic purposes, it's actually a great device. Great audio and visual experience and a great battery life on top of that. But to be honest, by this experiment, I have decided that I'll be using most of my task management apps through my iPad. For some reason, it helps me like focus more. Don't ask me why, but that happened. So I might consider using it that way. I should actually try doing the same experiment with an Android tablet as well. When it's done, you can check it out by clicking here. Else till the time, if you'd like to see me try to use a game console as my primary computer, then click here. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope to see you there.